Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 and also Psalms chapter 5 and verse 12. Romans 5, 17 and Psalms 5, 12. I feel the presence of the Lord today. I believe something unusual is going to happen in this room today. Amen. If you were coming for a usual service, well, that's about as usual as it's going to get because I believe it's about to get unusual. I'm looking for something to happen today. Hallelujah. I come expecting. Did you? Romans 5 says, For if any one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they received abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. I want to tell you, it's, it's possible to reign in life. It's possible to have abundance in life. Amen? Psalms 5 says, For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him as with a shield? I want to preach today on the favor of God or the favor shield. I believe that God will shield us with his favor. Are you ready for favor? I want favor in my life. I declare favor every day in my life. I declared over my family. I declared over my business. I declared over my connections. I declared over every aspect of my life. God, give me favor with men. Give me favor with you. Give me favor as I walk through the door of my house and enter into society. I'm praying for favor. And I'm asking this morning that favor would come over this congregation. That you would walk and live in the dimension of favor. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Favor defined, it, it literally means righteous or to live right or to care about God. It's to be favorable in a favorable regard to support and approve. I believe that God wants us to live that way, favored of him. Jacob loved and Esau hated. One was obedient and one was disobedient. And Abraham was called what? Friend of God. You almost got it. You were close. Friend of God. He wasn't just a servant of the Lord, but he was a friend of God. I believe that God wants to friend you. Favor also means advantages and advantage place. Taking a desire granted in your life. An advantage place. Desire granted in your life. God wants to bless you today. You believe that? I mean, some people think that God doesn't want to bless them. That God wants to bless everybody else, but he didn't want to bless me. Because I've been too bad, I've been this or I've been that. It doesn't matter what you've been, God wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to do good in your life. See, your hurt and your harvest, rather, is at stake. But you've got to get beyond the rejected state of mind you got to get it out of your mind that I'm rejected. People live their whole life in rejection. I talk to people. I mean, this is consistent. I talk to people. And they went through a divorce 20 years ago, and they still talk about it like it was yesterday. Or they went through a church hurt, or they went through a somebody wronged them deal, or whatever went on in their life. And it was years ago, and you're just talking to them casually. And guess what? It comes up. Why? Because they're living in a rejected state. Everything about their life is defeat. Everything about their life is rejection. Just because this one or that one rejected you doesn't mean that God has rejected you. And just because this or that has happened doesn't mean that God isn't going to do a new thing in your life. Somebody needs to shout on that. We keep trying to want what was old, and God said old things are past, and I've got something new for you. We keep trying to resuscitate and got all kinds of dreams and hopes on life support, trying to make it happen. And God said, if you just let go of that and get rid of that rejection and grab a hold of my favor and grab a hold of my name and grab a hold of my worship, I'll do something. You would be amazed at what I would do. 
He's no respecter of person. He will give you favor. It also means a thought of popularity. Now, Joseph is a prime example. You can't preach about favor and not talk about Joseph. Because Joseph was favored by his father. He was given the coat of many colors. His brothers didn't like it. You know, when you get favor on your life, you heard it preached, favor's not fair. And people don't like it when they see things happening for you when they think they ought to get it. But see, you, they don't know what you've been through to get where you got. And some of them are not willing to pay the price to get what you've got. But Joseph was favored. He didn't look like it all the time, but he was favored. See, seasons come, but favor is always there. And I think we mix this up. We get caught up in a season, and the season is not what we thought it was going to be. Well, I'm going through some stuff, Pastor. I thought I was favored. Uh, and because bad stuff is happening, uh, we want to discount God and say, well, he's not with me anymore, and he's not, he's, not, um, he's not on my life anymore, and he's not helping me anymore. I guess I've lost favor. But the fact of the matter is, good times and bad times comes on us all. But regardless of what I'm going through, I'm still favored of God. Because you read the story of Joseph, and it's powerful. He is thrown into a pit. He is thrown, and, and he is given up to, and into slavery, into Potiphar's house. Or rather, he's gone into serving at Potiphar's and, and all that stuff that goes on at Potiphar's house. I don't have time to go deep there, but you know all that goes on. Potiphar's wife looked on him and wanted him, and he, he kept character in the midst of the storm. He kept character when nobody was looking at him. He said, I'm favored. I don't look like it right now, but I've got favor. My daddy's favored me. My daddy has gave me something. And when, when nobody was watching, he kept walking in the favor. Mm. When the light, I need some water, please. Thank you. This stuff, somebody gave it to me last week. <coughs> I shook your hand. I am fist pumping today. Good to see you. Have a good week. God bless you. Call me what you will. I'm favored. <laughs> but in the midst of all that, he kept his favor. He kept his character saying, you can rip off my coat, but it doesn't change the label. You can call me something else, but my daddy said I'm favored. See, it doesn't matter what the enemy's saying about you right now. Your daddy, your heavenly father, he's already declared it over your life. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. You're blessed and highly. My God, hey, you've already been labeled by daddy. Joseph was in a strange place. He, he could have he went on with Potiphar's wife. He could have went on with the deal. And he could have done it because nobody would have known. But something on the inside of him that says, I'm going to stand up for what is right. Because Psalm says that righteousness. See, you want to talk about favor, but then the preacher's going to start talking about holiness. You want, you want favor on your life? When's the last time you stood for what was right? You want favor? I'm telling you, young people, a lot of people are going to talk about favor, but nobody tells you how to get it. You know how you get it? Walk upright. Do what's right when everybody else is saying, nah, that ain't, you ain't got to do all that. But something on the inside of you that says, Daddy, Daddy's watching, and, and Daddy spoke it over my life, and, and Daddy said this, and Daddy said that. I'm telling you, there's something. Even though my dad's with the Lord right now, I can still hear the guidance of my earthly father speaking to my spirit. But how much more does my heavenly father speak over my life? When I want to do wrong, I hear something say, you better stand up for right it doesn't mean it doesn't mean I'm always successful but it means there's a consciousness about me 
that says, I got to do what's right. See, God puts his righteous robe on you. See, your favor will grow. Jesus grew in favor. You got to ask for it. Did you hear what I just said? You got to ask for it. Why don't we just say that? Lord, let my favor grow. I mean, seriously, Lord, let my favor grow. Another definition of favor is to incline or to pull strings for. I've gotten places in my life that I never would have gotten if somebody hadn't pulled a string for me. Now, they might have been doing it for their ever, whatever reason they had, but I know what made them pull the string. <laughs> Hallelujah. They might have been doing it for what they thought, but God was behind the scenes saying, this is what I need to happen for Tracy. And this is what I need to happen for Tracy. And there's times I wanted this to happen and that to happen, but it didn't happen. But oh, how the favor of God never lifted. And, and people look at me and say, oh, everything you touch is blessed. I can tell you why it's blessed. Because I'm going to do what's right in the sight of the Lord. I'm not going to do one way in the pulpit and another way outside of the pulpit. I'm going to live what I preach and I'm going to preach what I live and I'm going to stand up right for God and I'm trying to raise up a church that I live in righteousness. Amen. Worship in righteousness. Go to bed in righteousness. Get up in righteousness. Live their life holy and acceptable unto the Lord and you'll find favor. Hallelujah. So many people want favor, and their life is full of sin, and they're full of secret things. It's not going to happen. Psalms 14, 9 says, fools make a mock at sin, but the righteous, there is favor. Did you hear what I just said? Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin, but the righteous... There is favor. Hallelujah. There's something to this thing of being righteous before the Lord. You can't mask it over. You got to live right. I walk in divine favor. I declare that every morning. Back when we were doing business full time. It would be a big day for us for business. And I would pray going out the door without fail. Lisa pray we have a good day. Pray we have a good day. What am I saying? Let us walk in the favor. Let us live in the favor. Come on, somebody. See, you, you don't, and, and every day hasn't been great for us. We've had setbacks. Amen. We've had some terrible times. It was a time when I was driving my truck and I had a trailer with two vehicles behind it and my truck jackknived on I-95 coming out of Fredericksburg just south of D.C. Went across three lanes of traffic, never hit nobody. Went down a 30-foot embankment, totaled everything I had. All I had was liability insurance, lost it all that day come up the hill and the Lord spoke something between me and him as I was coming up the hill and this little lady who was caught in the V of my, of my jackknife said, is you a Christian? I said, yes ma'am. In fact, I'm a preacher. She said, I know you had to be. I mean, every, I, mean I shut the road down, folks. Everything was scattered everywhere, a truck and a tree, one in down in the ravine, and there I come with not a scratch on me. Let me tell you what that was. That was divine favor. <laughs> Protection. It was a setback. But in the midst of the resistance, we didn't give up on God. Amen. And I'm talking to somebody out of my spirit today. The devil has been resisting. And the devil's been pushing you back. But don't give up in resistance. There's favor. There's favor. <laughs> Woo, somebody lift up your hands. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, I wish he wouldn't get so excited. I can't help myself. It feels like electricity going through my body. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Ecclesiastes. Glory. Glory. Somebody worship him today. Hey. You say, preacher, give me scripture for what's going on right here. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. So that the preachers couldn't stand to preach. And the singers couldn't stand to sing by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. I'm praying that I get a call from the mayor tomorrow. Preacher, that's what they used to call us, by the way. Preacher, what's that blue haze cloud over your church? Oh, you one of them kind. I'm praying for the glory to come. Hallelujah. Listen to what he said now. I've got, I'll give you some word. Ecclesiastes 2.26. For God giveth the man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. He gives it to you. Wisdom, knowledge, joy. Hallelujah. But to the sinner that he may go travail together and to heap up that he may give to good before the Lord. Translation. God's going to make people gather their wealth. Not even going to give them the power to enjoy it but it's laid up for the righteous. I said it's called the wealth of the wicked. And it's, it's a transfer about to happen. See, we live in a very wicked economy. We live on the Babylonian system. But you're looking at a pastor. I don't live on the Babylonian system. I live in the Melchizedek order. I live in a divine priesthood order of the blessings of God. And, and I declare the kingdom work of God over this house. And we move off the Levitical order. And we move into the Melchizedek order to the blessing and the faith. Some of you are looking at me like a cow staring at a new gate. I'm just dabbling into something new on you. But let me tell you, it's not new to me. It's been in my spirit for a long time. And I've been wanting to announce it. And I've been wanting to proclaim it. We're moving off the old and we're stepping into the new. He said in Exodus 3.21, I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak when you leave, you're not going to leave empty, but you're going to leave full in the presence of God. Psalms 102, 13, thou shalt arise and have mercy in Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I've been sitting for two years waiting God, when can I pronounce favor? God, when can I pronounce the time? When is it going to be the time? When is it going to be the day? People all around me, preacher, when things have got to be different. We can't keep operating the way it was. When I've been hearing the clamor, I've been hearing the word, and I've been saying, God, you hear what I'm hearing? Is it time yet? Oh, I heard him speak just this week. I heard him declare, walk into the sanctuary, get bold before the people, and declare it's a set time, and the time has come. Oh! 
come. It's not the time of what was. It's the time of what is. God is. What is he? He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's time for the righteous to rise up. Shout it with me. Favor's here. Stand with me. I'll finish later. Favor. Hallelujah. Just worship him a minute. Hallelujah. We've so lived in controlled environments for so long that we've forgotten the God factor. We have lived in controlled, induced environments that we've taken God out of the service. We've taken the supernatural out of the service. Listen, you can go somewhere else and find a better preacher. I ain't in no preaching contest with nobody. You can go somewhere and find as great a singer as they are. A better singer. But let me tell you what you're going to find when you walk through these doors. You're going to find a place that's filled with favor. Filled with a passion. That's going to be able to go through the nothings of God. They're going to go through the no's. Has God ever told you no? I mean, seriously. He ever told you? Yeah, he's told you no. If he hasn't told you no, you ain't been praying much. Because God told this old boy no a bunch. But see, when I hear no, I say, okay, God, what is it? It's his classroom to teach me. When Jesus, let me give you this. I got to give you this. This is the catalyst for the service. Because when Jesus walked in, Jairus' daughter, you remember the story, she's dying, it's dead, messed up, it's over. And he walks in, read the scripture. He says, this is a bunch of do about nothing. This is a bunch of do about nothing. She's asleep. There's no big deal here. There's, you know how they say, nothing to see here. Keep moving. Nothing to see here. Jesus said, there's nothing to do. This is about nothing. I want to declare over your life, this is about nothing. God's favor is greater. God's anointing is greater. God's help is greater. God's blessing is greater. God's favor is greater. This is a bunch of do about nothing. Pastor, I want the favor, my God, I don't know how we're going to do this, ushers, but get ready. I want the favor of God. I want it pronounced. I want it prominent. I want it displayed in neon. When I walk out of this room today, I want everybody to know I'm favored of God. I've got his favor on my family. I've got his favor on my business. I've got his favor over my ministry. I've got his favor... Pastor, I want the favor of God. If that's you, I want you to get out of where you're standing. Don't you do it slowly, but if you mean it, get out of you where you are quickly and say, I want favor. This is my year of favor. Come on. It's my year of favor. Come on.